the in-season tournament is over. We know what the matchups are going to be. And as fun as that is, we got to talk about the the game, actually, the stuff that matters. Um, Golden State Warriors lose again. Got a nice bounce back win in San Antonio. We said last time we met, I think, two and three and one, four and oh, but probably like somewhere between two and two and four and oh on this four game ski, uh, stretch. They're, they're one and one going in. Um, but this was a tough one. I'm going to let y'all get into it because I think y'all were locked in. Uh, but any thoughts on Warriors? The Warriors lost to Sacramento in the last game of the end season tournament. Jay Badge? Um, I think it was the story of the season so far. It was uh, – I turned on the game, and we were already up. I knew, like – so, yeah, uh, Clay. I think Clay started off hot again. Wiggins. Wiggins. Oh, man, we're so good when Clay and Wiggins play good. <laughs> but in the – around the third – the end of the third quarter, fourth quarter, it, you could just – no, I think fourth quarter, you could just tell that. Uh, Clay and Wiggins were back to their selves, at least Wiggins was. And then, yeah, the stretch where Moody probably should have stayed in the game and he brought Clay back in. I feel like that kind of – that turned that – that's what gave us – that's what gave the game away. Yeah, Van Gundy called it at that point. When Moody came out, he had mm-hmm. Van Gundy called it 11 points. And it was like Van Gundy was shocked as he said every fact. Too. He was like, 11 points, hasn't missed a field goal all quarter. And he's like, I don't know if I would have took him out. And then, and then he finally like said, well, maybe he's tired. And then my head, I was like, he's not coming back in this game. Steve Kerr's not putting him back in. And if probably like four and a half, maybe five minutes left, like that, he did all that. It was four, yeah, four minutes and thirty seconds yeah, left. That's what, that's why. That's what made me mad because he took Moody out with four minutes left, and I just feel like after he just hit two threes, and I feel like he could have just let him rock two more minutes, if in, if anything, before bringing Clay back in. You or have to, just, yeah, or you yeah. could have just seen how, how yeah. shit looked with that lineup. It was it was Curry, uh, Curry, Moody, Wiggins, Draymond, and Looney, and I feel like that was a really good lineup mm-hmm. that could have even that could potentially could have closed the game out. But yeah, yeah, if you had to play back in the last two minutes just for just for, for his security or whatever it was. Yeah. Just I don't know, let the dude miss a shot first or something, like have a heat check or something. But obviously he was a, he was gearing up. He he was in it. You could tell he was in the gear and it was different. It was, yeah, it yeah. Felt, felt a little different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he, he said uh, it's the two. What was it to say the uh, the two minutes thing that you said was good? Because I didn't think about that at first. I was just like my head. Yeah, it was just he's not coming back in this game after he came out. But I didn't. Even, I wasn't even thinking at that time. Of just like oh yeah, just let him. Like you literally just tell Clay. Come back, come back to the bench. Mm-hmm. Like let him get, let him get a couple more plays. And then you could, it could be a minute, it could be yeah. two minutes later. Probably realistic is two minutes later. You get him in at the first dead ball within the last two minutes of the game if you really want to give your. This is getting to the details, man. It's like, yeah, really, Kerr having to figure this out. Like what the night like tonight, where it's like you got to look at coaching and coaching in. Well, yeah, this is a definitely a Steph Curry, uh, Steph Curry, Steve Kerr loss for sure. You just gotta look look at the top dogs, the point guard, the head coach, the scheme, and everything, and not executing this. Yeah, looking at those two, yeah, the details, man. You know your team, you know your players. You got a guy out there that's really showing you something. He's been consistent all year, and he he gets a he gets a streak like that at the most crucial well, crucial moments of the game. He's giving you all of the fourth quarter points. That's the other part of of him coming out four for four from the field, uh, eleven points in the fourth quarter was I think Van Gundy said Wiggins. Clay and Steph were like they were shooting terrible in the fourth quarter. They they had I think it was a combined like maybe one or two field goals. Yeah. It was it was like like yeah, going into that last four or five minutes, Clay Wiggins and Curry hadn't been able to get anything really going. So I don't think Clay did anything when he came in the last four minutes. I don't know. Yeah, I point. don't even know if he I got like a real it. touch. I don't know if he got a shot up or anything. If he like, did, it he, wasn't a good one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If he did, it wasn't a good one. It was just like wow, we just subbed out production I, I don't know i mean i feel like everybody knew it was about to happen it just i saw clay getting up with them ice packs on his knees and i'm just like yo you're telling that's the thing why i don't even blame clay though it's, it's not yeah it's, it's not clay at all thing. i feel like clay would have perfectly understood if you just told him real quick okay we're gonna let this rock for with for a little bit and things would have been fine and i get that yeah i have to just put that one on so that's Kirk, put that Kirk, one Kirk. on Kirk because even, but then I also put it on Curry too because 
you got to say something. I feel like you got to say some Curry and Draymond. Y'all got to say something there, like because that's yeah. I get I, to. It's just the moment. I understand the rotation. I feel like that's just Curry. He just wants to stick to the rotation, but. I, I don't know. Maybe it's weird because it's the NBA, but sometimes no, it's not. It felt, no, it felt like an obvious. No, it really <laughs> felt like an obvious in the moment decision. It's like one of those Kerr, decisions Kerr has to face so he can like see it clearly. Like yo, like yeah, Clay had a good game. Clay's had had a couple of good games now. He's not stinking up the gym anymore. You got this young dude who's ready to play and close games out. You got this young dude who's ready, who's very reliable. And it's like you can make the decision to rock with Clay or you can make the decision to rock with this young dude in the last two, three, four minutes of games. And, like, it's not an easy decision to make, especially when Clay has 20 points, you know, yeah. in the game. It's like – but, you know, you, you have to be tapped in with your team and be able to, yeah, coach this team night to night in the regular season. But, yeah, it was just absolutely one of those times where you just at least tell Clay. Give him a couple more plays. Clay has been hot. More well, is a streaky as player. Streaky as a good player has ever been streaky, and he knows what it's like to be like have somebody come check, look, come to the sideline and see them walk back because Clay makes another three. Like, yeah. like it's like he would at least know what it means, especially Kerr to be able to say like, yeah, just take a minute, dog. Now, Steph, Steph is selling Clay out by the way. He's, it's the only time I, you'll ever hear me hate on the way Steph Curry plays the point guard position because I know he's one. One, he's probably the greatest point guard to ever play the game of basketball. But man, he be selling Clay out, dog. He be acting like Clay could still do stuff. He be running these actions, and he be Steph lets the uh, the because the Warriors are all about flow, read and react, and all that stuff. But Steph just lets the initial action involve Clay too often, and it's either even if it's not Steph making the pass, you can see him organizing it to get Clay a look, and it's like Clay, the ball's gonna or Steph, the ball's gonna die in Clay's hands, and you're asking way too much of him. Like you have to tweet, you have to be person that you have to either create the initial penetration or find someone else to create the initial penetration for clay to play off of like we can't keep you can't keep acting like for him it's him and Kerr the one up yeah curry and Kerr the main ones i'm looking at like you guys have to talk to and stop treating clay thompson like he's clay thompson like it's up to you two guys to start changing the, the looks and the the amount of touch looks and touches he's getting and the amount of minutes getting in the game just so he can start to adjust his game. It's time to get out of 2016. Oh, man. Yeah, Curry, the- yeah. Curry just be running some plays like it's just going to Curry. Like, Curry, what do you think – what do you think Clay's going to do off this off this pin down? Like, we need it. Like, it would be times where we need a bucket or, like, the game feels like it's hanging in, or going a certain way or, like, we're not having a couple bad possessions in a row with Clay on the court. And it's just like, Steph, it would really do well if you didn't go to Clay or you made sure Clay didn't throw away a possession here. Like, you need to be thinking about that. You need to be thinking that Clay will throw away possessions sometimes. You need to protect him from that. Yeah. And that shouldn't, be, shouldn't, that shouldn't just be Curry, but I expect Curry, greatest point, one of the greatest pointers of all time, just tap, that, tap into that as the season goes. And I definitely expect Steve Kerr, one of the greatest coaches of all time, to progressively adjust this man's role. This game was over. The – Playing turn or the end season tournament chances were over when uh Gary Payton got hurt because yeah. this team not beating anybody by double digits without Gary Payton. And uh, the game was over when yeah, Moses Moody subbed out the game and uh, Clay Thompson, uh, Moses Moody subbed out the game after scoring 11 points in the fourth quarter. That was they wasn't they wasn't gonna win that game. Fox was Fox missed the fourth quarter, was gonna get to the line, get enough buckets, rally the team, rally the crowd, and make it really hard for you to win a basketball game in Sacramento because that's what he do. What he do? Fuck that guy wasn't gonna let that happen. The basketball guys were not gonna let us win that game. Yeah, was, yeah. yeah you can't. I just yeah, Draymond yeah. wild too, man. Yeah, Draymond back. Hey, you, crazy, know, you know what's funny? They messed up on that. <laughs> they so they said he was ejected at first. They put a Draymond Green ejected. They switched the technical. They <laughs> just <laughs> man, they profiling this dude. I say when he got the tech, the the it's funny uh, Big Gundy or the the other dude said it, it was like. Him and Curry are doing the exact same motion. Like, they're doing the exact same thing at the moment. He's just like, right. Like, the moment he calls the tech, like, Steph and Draymond are making, like, doing the exact same thing, talking about the exact same thing. And it looks like they're mouthing the same shit. It's like, oh, yeah, nah, Draymond, you're going to get a team for this. Steph, they, they don't even see Steph doing it, man. <laughs> it Steph's, that, Steph's the same asshole, though. He say, say was, they're both They were both arguing. It wasn't the, the most recent play. It was like the play before that they were arguing. It was like they were arguing Steve Kerr, Steve Kerr's players, arguing for a carry or like a double dribble or some shit from the play before. Mm-hmm. You guys are antagonizing the ref. Yeah. Free John Morant. Oh. That made me go back to that. Well, yeah. That's if you get it, you get it. Free the Memphis Grizzlies to the Eastern Conference. You feel me? 
that part. Bless, bless, bless the Grizzlies. He, let's send them over there. Uh, oh yeah, free Moody. Uh, if I'm Moody, I don't know. I don't know how I feel. It's it's getting weird. Maybe they have some weird connection that we don't know about, or Curry's doing trying to do his version of a I don't know what. Yeah, or that's the thing. I feel like I'm trying to like. I feel like Popovich easily lets a player ride out there, like. Yeah. And man, what if Moody is our Kawhi Leonard, and we just don't know? He is. No, I was like, the more I watch, like, okay, I already about Kawhi, but you feel me? He is our guy. Like the closest thing the Warriors staff will ever get to draft. Like I think keep. I feel like I was coming into it. I still feel very strongly about how good Kaminga can be and how strong I think the Curry Kaminga tandem can can look. Mm-hmm. Very, it's good. It can happen very fast, I guess. Like with those two. But the more I watch Moses Moody play, the more I'm like, yo, y'all did this shit. Like I'll just need to play this dude 36 minutes a night because he legitimately, like, yeah, he legitimately mm-hmm. is the most surprising player that I could say could be the second best player on the team. I don't think he's going to get the minutes and there's too many players in the way to happen, but like he's going to be more consistent and locked in than everybody in his way. And that's what feels unfair. So it's just like, how good is he? We really don't know because he's there's so many, Mike, Mike, Mike said it today uh, when he was watching Kerr's, uh, Kerr's presser. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. I wanted was, to bring that. I to he was not in the room. Moses Moody was not supposed to be in the rotation tonight. He only was in play so many minutes because Gary Payne got hurt. That's what I was thinking too. Like, Steve Kerr was not gonna play this man. That's who that's that's who he wasn't gonna play. And even when Wiggins and Clay have a good game, you just still see I think Moses Moody is gonna have a better game on less shots with less mistakes. And it's just yeah, how many times yeah, how how much how much of the season we're gonna get through before yeah. I'm gonna it's gotta fit. I'm actually going to play this. I don't know if you guys will be able to hear it, but the people listening will be able to hear it, and I'll kind of just break it down after. But I do want to play this because it kind of, on a, on a lot of different levels, it just threw me apart. That's why he's going to be in the league for a long time. Can y'all hear that? Nah. nah I Try again? He was really oh. hot in the fourth, and, and you went away from him. What uh-huh. was kind of the reasoning? Um, Moses was awesome tonight. Um, you know, we, Starts we by needed saying to Moses get wins awesome on the floor uh, for defense against Fox, mm. um, and we uh, decided to, to to go with with Clay and and our, our vets. You know, we thought about um, you know keeping him out there, but um, you know we we made the move that we made. He was, by the way, Moses mm. was fantastic. Turner Red um, <laughs> out of the rotation. Call tonight, white man BS. The game, um, talk to him for the game and explain what we were doing. Um, the guy, he reminds me of Loon, um, Moses. Ah, he said. just said he reminds him of Loon. Just so much little disrespect. It was just so funny how he goes through it because it starts with like, he says the justifiable part of the sub where it's like, yeah, Wiggins in for defense and like Wiggins at 29. Wiggins comes back in the game and it says, just kind of slips in, you know, bring our clay, bring our vets back in. No real justification actually for that. But then the disrespectful part is just, he just, I don't understand. I don't understand why he wasn't in like what he's done over the last three or four games, it literally feels like a coach trying to make a change so his team wins games and ignoring the various obvious change that needs to be made. So now you're cutting minutes from, like you said, from a nigga that just needs to play. And it's wild that we're kind of sitting here and having to deal with this. And then, yeah, just at the end, say, he reminds me, he said, Kurt said when he had the conversation, you know, took it like a pro, reminds me of Loon. I was like, no, we don't need to do this shit. Like, we like, just, he should be. We don't need to just let this nigga be. Yeah, he's fine coming off the bench, so we're going to make him come off the bench because Clay's not going to be fine with it. It's, I get it. I get it. No, yeah, it's you, you, I mean, you, first pod, first two pods, you called it. I feel like a lot of the discussion was, Mm -hmm. you were just explaining to me, I feel like a lot of just, I went. I was explaining how just Moody and Kaminga have proven and shown they need to be on the court this season, and, and Kurz, I feel like, made the way be on, for them to be on the court. But everything you were saying, I think the holdbacks and every, where our conversation went was just Clay Thompson mm-hmm. and where do the minutes come for come from for Moody and for Kaminga mm-hmm. consistently. And then that's something that was just something we worried about, something we were, we were saying. We're going to be frustrated probably with how Kerr, like, tries to figure this out because he is just going to have to get through playing Clay Thompson minutes yeah. and figuring out around that how, how this season is going to go. But – the person I think we even probably said it then the person who loses out the most isn't Kaminga and all of this. The person who loses out the most is Moses Moody. Like in this wing ro- this crowded wing rotation, crowded point, like kind of crowded guard rotation because Kerr has his 
very set. I think mm-hmm. there's three very professional. I feel like their agents or like Chris Paul and Corey Joseph agents have like the roles written down of like what it's supposed mm-hmm. to be. Like the very the backcourt or the point guard shit is like completely set, especially with mm-hmm. the way Brandon's been playing and and that's such a, like Brandon being a positive and it's just and all of this, everything about the roster being exactly what it's supposed to be outside of Mm-hmm. Your start wings inconsistencies and it's just highlights it makes it feel mm-hmm. it makes us feel why we got to this point now. It feels so frustrating mm-hmm. because it's specifically the guys in front of Wigan in front of Moody playing mm-hmm. tough par and inconsistent. Mm-hmm. While he just continues no. to show he's ready and we knew he wasn't going it was knew it was gonna be a fight for the minutes, but it's sad to see that it just he deserves them and there's nothing that could probably get get them to him except for uh Kerr, Kerr just telling, yeah, Kerr getting Clay up out of there. How does Kerr deal yeah. with Clay? And I'll and I'll say my last part of this because as much as like I think it's good you guys have broke broke down the frustration with Kerr and with Steph. And I think in this particular case, I just want to as much as we're killing Kerr, and I want to kill Kerr because it's like I don't know, man. Just feel like you just got to ride the high hand. Um, Curry had a quote, Kawakami or not Curry had a quote. I think Kawakami was talking about Curry. Like how Curry's mentality is that he wants to be out there with Draymond and Clay, and I just it's the I don't know the big boy talks, but it's like I don't know. You guys told the dude thought Mark Jackson was the coach that was going to lead him to the to the championship. Like sometimes you got to tell NBA players that they're just you're not right on things. It's like yeah, it would be great. It would be great if Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, and Draymond Green rolled off into the sunset like playing great basketball and like all at the same time finished it out retired jerseys in the rafters statues all at the same time Steph's just gonna play longer and that it's, uh, we're at the first year of like yo we are wasting Steph Curry's a I won't say prime because he's I don't know I don't know how you talk about Steph Curry and where he's at but we're wasting a very good like an excellent elite Steph Curry season when it's obvious it's just obvious man it's okay it's okay players get older sometimes guys take spots if you want to win a championship this year which is feeling less and less and less of a possibility as the season goes on you're going to need to mess with this starting lineup it's not going to happen with these guys we've got 18 games of evidence now it's not going to happen with these guys and maybe i'm wrong but i think it needs you gotta switch it up man you just gotta switch it up i know y'all yeah, play, but y'all gotta switch it up where my appreciation for LeBron's coming in. Somebody <laughs> said, LeBron, don't hesitate to push that red button. Mm. No matter where he's at, he already said it. So oh, he already boy. mentioned the change got to be made. Uh, Clay <laughs> can't get it together. It's just like, man, like. Clay would have been, been gone last November. Last, If this was LeBron, and that's why I give, yeah, I give LeBron credit too because Curry being way too nice. Everything Mike was saying there, Curry – Curry, Curry want to be out there with Clay and Draymond too. I feel like he definitely part of this man. He, 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 he hanging on to something that ain't there, there too. And like I was saying earlier, the way he, the way the looks he be trying to get Clay, I just be like Steph, you like the glass needs to shatter so you can see this person for who he really is now. But yeah, Brian, Brian would have got uh, would have dealt with uh, Clay's slumps last year. He would have been like, hey dog, we out on this. <laughs> I just want to point out, I didn't notice till now. Somehow Andrew Wiggins managed to be a, a negative uh, impact today. Or not negative impact, but somehow they didn't win the minutes when he was on the court. And I don't even know if I blame him. a lot of that. minutes with Clay. Yeah, that's, I don't know if I blame him for that as much as, like, the two times this dude's got buckets, you we haven't been able to win. So I, I don't know. I was, this team's weird, man. I was saying, oh, that was the, what was I going to say? Uh, you said something else to me, thought of something. Hmm. Well, actually, yeah, the pump fake, that's what's, what's kind of scary to me about this team, actually, and really because of Moses Moody mm-hmm. and Kaminga, I feel like, is what unlocks this. And uh, seeing, yeah, Gary Payton is part of also what unlocks this, which is scary to see him get hurt again, hope Gary gets healthy, and hope it's nothing mm-hmm. serious because very big key to this team. But uh, her is going to be able to get by because this team is really good. He's not going to have to, I think, confront a lot of what we're talking about because I think they're going to be able – they're going to be fine. Uh, I think it's felt a lot worse. Uh, the last, first 18 games has felt a lot worse than where they're really at, which I think is just a really solid roster. And even with the Chris and, or whatever is going on with Chris, like Corey's been, yeah, exactly what you expect from Corey. Just like Chris has been like kind of exactly what you expect from Chris, kind of like just exactly kind of professional. Dario's continues to kind of just surprise me and shoot the ball really well. Up and down, everything's been great. Uh, it's just the Clay Wiggins part having been so bad 
And now I see Clay and Wiggins starting to kind of turn the corner a little bit. And that's where I worry that their minutes aren't going to change. We're going to have to get through most of this season playing through the bad habits and the ups and downs of Clay and Wiggins when we need this flip. Like, we just need Kaminga and Moody to be the guys. I want to play through Moody and Kaminga's bad Mm -hmm. games and turnovers. I don't want to play through Clay Thompson and Andrew Wiggins' ups and downs. Like, at least we need a split. Like, at least we need to split this. Like, we can't continue to, yeah, have to play Wiggins and the Moody Kaminga uh, duos come or as a starter bench as it is now. Like it needs to at least split in half so that you know Wiggins or Clay comes off the bench and Moody or Kaminga starts by the end of the season. So yeah, that's so uh, yeah. I'm kind of scared because I think they're good enough to just kind of meddle around at 500 with Clay and Wiggins starting and Clay and Wiggins playing up and down basketball, and that just doesn't leave the room ever for Moody to really break through and just steal the spot from one of those two which I think needs to happen. So we'll see. We'll see. Kerr, man, you got your squad, dog. This is a Steve Kerr team. You know, 10 deep. Gary, get Gary back healthy. You need you need Gary Payton. It's Steph, and, Steph and Steve need Gary Payton, man. That's that's where I, too, that first half, look at how, how they played in that first half. That was probably shows you part of the sign, like this team. Just having Draymond and Gary both, like, Hey man, it's we locked in. It's, it looked different. It looked different. That's why ah, it's frustrating. Hopefully he'll be back soon. Hoping, hoping the best for GP too. Cause yeah, the energy is different. The energy is different with him and Draymond both out there and lo- uh, locked in, especially in a season like this one where I think they're just that. Ma- I guess I don't know. It feels weird to call it Warriors magic, but it does feel like that kind of. I think where I probably why I feel so much like you have to move on. And I, like, move on from Clay. I think you talked about how, like, a bench role makes sense. Like, I'm like, this dude can be a factor on the team, but it is, like, yeah, it's it's different than what it was before. And 2022 was, like, honestly fairly different, but it's, like, it's really different than what it was before now. Um, so, and keeps doing thing? the thing, too, man. I feel like he was leading scorer at halftime tonight having mm-hmm. a good game, but he will just shoot himself out of a good game, and that's where it comes to Curry and Kerr. Really have to figure out this role for, for him because <laughs> – Clay's not going to be a 33% shooter in the NBA, like a three-point shooter in the NBA. Like he's going to be capable of shooting 37, 38. Mm -hmm. From three, you have to make sure that he's not out there chucking a bunch of mid-range looks, getting too many touches, and, and yeah, not playing on, not on the court more than he should be in times that he shouldn't be. And that's, yeah, that all comes down to Curry and Kerr figuring it out. It's, yeah, yeah. He'll just he'll take a good game and turn it into a bad one. He'll take a good quarter, turn it into a bad quarter really fast these days. And I'll be feeling bad because it's like he's now he's really showing up for y'all. Somebody needs to put the leash or somebody needs to that sounds bad. Somebody needs to just somebody needs to understand understand where he's at. Somebody needs and, to be a coach slash ball handler and yeah. make sure their teammates are in the best positions to be effective. And that actually expands beyond Curry and uh, Curry to also include uh, Draymond, who I haven't been hating on much this year because, honestly, every time I look up, he's making threes. But uh, Man, Draymond made two threes and we lost. That's crazy. Oh, shoot. Yeah, that usually doesn't happen. Damn. No, no, it's, it also, it's, it's all makes it easy. I feel like it's going it's to take Curry a while to get there, but click at some point and it should be overflow if we do get, get, get the flip at some point. Because Clay or Wiggins is going to really benefit from playing next to Dario and Chris, I think. Like, I think it's tougher for Moody and Kaminga, and that's they're just consistent and they're ready to play and ready to contribute. But I think it's tougher for them and be easier for Clay, and Wig- Clay or Wiggins to play alongside those two and just play off of those two guys. And Chris is going to, yeah, I think Chris, Chris can, yeah. Uh, Chris with, with his super teammate Dario out there and everything they've got going. You put the wing, put one of those wings out there with the bench lineup. You know, I think it balances it out, balances it out really well, balances us out really well. What even happened to Chris? I think he had leg soreness. What was that? Yeah, that was a tough one. That was a tough one, man. I thought like that was a uh, feel like Chris Haynes was as he was even saying it was like, ah, oh, man, I feel like I'm just reporting a dude was old and his leg hurt. It wasn't much else beyond that. Man, I just see Steph and the young dudes, man. That's what I'm saying. White I was just boy, about to say, Steph, Steph not playing white boy. enough with Steph. I feel like he's not getting enough time with Moody, of course, Moody, of course but even just all of them. Just I feel like mm-hmm. that's why Chris is kind of like the scapegoat. Now Steph, Steph needs to be playing with these dudes, actually, mm-hmm. and he doesn't 
get that much time with them. And Clay mm-hmm. needs to probably play with the Chris versus yeah. bench lineups. Mm-hmm. Wiggins needs to have some nights too. That was when Moody hit the because it was the three. He usually do, you know, he do his jab and his three. Like, oh, he confident. He take his time with it. He do his thing. He knocking it down now. But this time, when the white boy came down, hit a three on him, and then he came oh, back yeah. the other way. He just pulled. I was like, I was like, oh shit. I was like, wait, Moody ready? I ain't never t- seen him take a three that fast. Like he was a two K. He he went up. He went up one bad. He went from like bronze or yeah, no mm-hmm. quick release. He, he went up to bronze. <laughs> now. He he got that off. I was like, what? Man, dude been working on his game. Reward this man. He's working on his game. Y'all remember when 2K put shot release uh, shot release speed on badges and made those fucking grind? Yeah, that wasn't bad. I was going to say, I said that it was not a badge no more. Yeah. That's man, why they I used to make us do that. No, I'm just thinking back. They used to, okay, that's a side take. Any other thoughts on? That's the other difference between, that's why Chris needs to play with Clay more mm-hmm. too, is Chris don't have no problem looking off Clay when it's just not there. I feel like yep. Steph will try to force it sometimes, and it will mm-hmm. quick get it could get Steph two turnovers over two turnovers a game trying to force some shit to Clay or force some action that Draymond thinks he sees, and just in the middle of the possession or just early in the possession. And Chris, I've seen it a couple of times already. Chris will just look Clay off, and Clay will get kind of mad, but mm-hmm. he'll see, I mean, that's shit. He sets him up with the right with the right shots. Yeah, it's just yeah. better. It's better for him. Yeah, yeah, Clay was it Clay Clay get to that point where he ain't got no choices, man. Take your ass to the bench and play with Chris, man, and just take whatever you get. But it really everything you're saying is true because that Chris Chris watch just watching Chris close a quarter is crazy. I watched him play for a long time, but watching him close close a quarter is crazy because he really does just yeah, he understands the flow uh understands uh time and possession so well and he's so insane about not turning the ball over, especially when it the game gets down to any type of one minute, one minute, 30 seconds left. In the first three quarters, you feel me? He he is just, yeah, he is aware and he's going to try to, yeah, get a two, four, five, six point advantage, whatever advantage he can get on the team in that one to two minutes, he's going to get it and see it when he plays with Dario. Just he's going to look off other people for Dario. And I've gotten used to it now because mm-hmm. I understand how his brain is working. I'm just like, yeah, he just knows how to, on average, just get the, the same like, points, get the points per possession, whatever, however that stat works. Like mm-hmm. with Chris, watching Chris Paul play, that's what it feels like I'm watching, especially, especially at the close quarter, especially close quarters when he's switched when he's playing against all bench lineups with our full bench lineup. And Claire Wiggins just definitely would benefit from a guy who just looks them off for a better look or because he knows he's going to draw this foul the little things chris paul does are he's had a couple nights too where he's made some shots man and you're doing that as he look he looked real nice when he's making when he's making his little floater and a three but uh yeah there's somebody who's gonna look clay and wiggins off as opposed to step who ain't too nice man it's too nice this thing is really we're a point guard dynamic steps being too unselfish trying to spread the floor around like a point guard while chris knows the point guard thing to do is to just I'm going to hit David West or Dario Sarwich on the pick and pop because I trust them more than anybody else on the court. And you other niggas better be ready to shoot when we pass y'all the ball. We're going to score every time or we're going to get fouled every time. And y'all going to get good looks off of that shit. So just be patient and wait. Curry over here. Here, Clay. Here, we. Here, know, Clay. Chris was, on the, was Chris even on the bench the rest of the game? He probably. He came out. I feel like Stan Van pointed out when yeah, he, he came out bad. from the from the back to tell him something. He saw something. Yeah, yeah he wasn't going to stand. He said, man, y'all going to make me get up. Y'all make me get up. Uh, I said, they going to figure this out, man. We got two, two of the greatest pointers of all time, greatest coaches of all time, man. No way this team doesn't win the NBA championship. Let If they don't, they let Moses Moody down. Next Kawhi Leonard. You heard it here first. <laughs> I believe. Hashtag. Right. I believe. It. Hey, man. I'm all in. Moses Moody. He was, good, he was good nice. player, man. He's a really good player. Um, I feel like we ran the game. Any other thoughts on this game? I was going to point out Sabonis. Uh, Sabonis going to have to figure it out against these dudes at some point, man. I don't know what this what this is here. The written. The- all right, I'm not supposed to hate, man, but some, some players make me want to hate, man. A good win oh, for the King. Had, like the ten, ten assists, ten assists to one turnover. I he was done. He was done. When they said that stat that he shoots sixty percent versus the all, entire NBA and less than fifty percent versus the Warriors, I was like, bro, Draymond ain't Draymond nice and all, but I'm like, what is everybody else doing? Like, because I'm here, yeah, I'm, I'm only watching him versus the, most of the time versus yeah. the Warriors, and it's just mm-hmm. like, yeah, I that jump, he, that gap. Has to yeah. just feel crazy. It's like, yo, he's really dominant versus 
29 teams in the NBA, like or like a do- consistently dominant player versus most teams in the NBA. It's and wild. I just see the version of him that can't get a bucket. It's wild how hard it is for him to make open jump shots against the Warriors. Because, again, it's one of those things where I've seen enough Kings games and also just, like, before he got to Sacramento, like, this nigga can make an open 20-foot jumper. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's shots the Warriors give him that are, like, I don't, yeah, I don't understand, like, how, like, he did, he missed another one of those, like, elbow, like, kind of one step to the right of the elbow kind of jumpers, and it's like, bro, you're, you're in the NBA, you have a good touch, I watched you shoot, spend a whole season just shooting corner threes because Russell Westbrook was trying to get triple doubles, like, I know you have a decent jump shot, like, and it's, that's it's, how they, they were, the Warriors treat triple double dudes with disrespect, that's how they treated Russ, too, I feel like, they, yeah, he shoot no. a jump shot, or something about it, they just, they laughing, or they no. just, I mean, it starts, there's like, Tony, I mean, putting in, the, a big moment for them and like the one of the starting of how this all comes to be is putting Bogut on Tony Allen. It was like they were kind of not the inventors, but they were the ones that probably went to the extreme of, oh, that guy can't shoot. We're not going to guard him at all, actually, kind of yeah. type of thing. So, yeah, as we were like doing the, the mm-hmm. best player in the world, 2013, Boris Diaz telling him, hey, back up <laughs> until he make a shot. Back Let's up go. until number six. Boris Diaz. Was going last to... minute he procrastinated. He started making jump yeah. shots. At the end. That was he wild. Was... That was wild. I did the same thing to the Warriors in 2016. Um, the same thing to the Warriors in 2016. Um, but I was gonna say, uh, yeah, Boris Dia for just to clarify, Boris Dia was going un- like there are screens being set for LeBron at the elbow, and Boris Dia was going under those screens. It, it was a combination of two crazy, of two great basketball minds because it was mm-hmm. Popovich. And Boris, like it was Popovich and any Popovich player, you feel me? It just looked like they going under, they going under. But it was Boris, so it just looked like Boris wasn't even like even. Yeah, he was just like rolling around the screen, and there was like if he was on the, the screen was Boris dragged the screen down to the block. Now it's just like mm-hmm. he's increasing the space between him and LeBron for no reason. It's just like <laughs> oh yeah, no, like this is crazy. Like there, it felt yeah, it was that where where Doc. And KG, you feel me, kind of mm-hmm. let me down because Pop and Pop was really about that life. We were just saying, I don't respect your jump shot, LeBron James. Where I get why the Celtics had to bend eventually, but Celtics was always kind of playing too much up on LeBron, man. It, it, mm-hmm. But yeah, it takes, it takes a real confidence to tell a great player, like, yo, like to really kind of disrespect a great player with the game plan like that. But but yeah, the Warriors be choosing that shit whenever they see somebody who just can't shoot. They gonna make you feel feel disrespectful. Like, you know, like we leaving you wide, wide open. Like, we leave you wide, wide open. That's crazy. Dude, that's what Popovich did that to LeBron. That's crazy. That's why he probably lost the series. <laughs> no, he came back. Oh yeah, that's why he lost that series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's why he lost. Yeah, no. down in his free throws. And, well, yeah, no, yeah. he doesn't. Some to just don't don't take Tim Duncan out the game, you know, or at least after the first time you give up offense rebound in the three, they don't take Tim Duncan out the game again. That's how it goes. Mm. We, we all make we all make mistakes. Um, any other any other Warriors thoughts on the or any thoughts on this game? I just yeah, I saw some bonus stat line. And I feel like I had to point it out, but. Uh, I don't know what's about to happen the next two games. So whatever oh, I said, yeah. I don't know what's going on with the Clippers. That's a good like, we got one uh, win, baby. We got one win. We beat them once. I think. I mean, can we just go straight 